and my colonoscopy doctor, uh, as I was getting my colonoscopy, uh, told me that he uh, took his wife there for her first date, for their first date. So, there you go. so there you go. There you go. Pizza and pasta is one of the most popular dishes in the world. Yet, having a truly authentic Italian experience is still highly sought after when you want to just enjoy a night out with your friends and family. Today, I'm going to bring you behind the scenes to Nook, one of Vancouver's top Italian spots, and to check out their secret sauce behind their true success. Let's check it out. There are four locations in Vancouver where you can find a Nook restaurant, and today we'll be heading to the Olympic Village location, an area well known for their scenic views and their active lifestyle. Nook is open from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. daily, and their main clientele are those looking for a classic dining experience with delicious Italian cuisine. Hello, hello, hello Wilson, how are you? Long time no see, thanks. It's been a while. Yeah, so I'm super, super, Honored to be here. Actually, you you know super busy, and you still have the time for us. No, well, I, I mean, I'm not as busy as it looks. <laughs> yeah. Please, please tell yes. me, introduce uh, to us what is new. Why is this one of the top Italian places in Vancouver? Well, I don't know if it's one of the top Italian places, well, but it's one of it's, it's a busy one. It's a, I mean, I think it's it's popular because it's a very simple restaurant. Mm -hmm. We do a handful of things, and we do them well. We make everything in house, and I, I, I don't think pizza and pasta are ever going to go out of fashion. And the, the people seem to like it. It's, it's, it's simple. It's simple. simple and you know, everybody knows what it is that we're trying to sell them. We're not trying to sell them something they've never seen before. We just sort of serve them a handful of pastas and a handful of pizzas that they all know and they seem to like. And uh, I mean, I think another reason we're popular is we were sort of really one of the first people to sort of do it in sort of a modern setting, not a old school Italian setting with a seven page menu. Right. We were really one of the first people to, to modernize the experience. And we haven't really modernized the food, just the experience. That's awesome. Like, and everything is made in-house. Everything. And you have this huge pizza. Yeah, we, yeah well, we have, a, we have a different different ovens in every restaurant. This is right. the biggest one here. Yeah. It's huge. It's almost too big. But uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're meant to emulate a wood-burning oven. They're gas, which is, I mean, I'm th I wanted wood-burning originally, but the, the, my original location, wood would not be allowed. It's very, diff it's very difficult to get a permit to put a, a wood-burning oven, and th yeah. thankfully I couldn't. So we have gas, and now we're uh, we're not Boy Scouts, we're cooks. We just turn the oven on, and a couple hours later, it's ready to go. Do we get to check it out? We will get to check it out. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. Let's if you want to make your own pizza, yeah. I, I don't actually make pizza. Oh yeah, let's go uh, check I don't know how to do it, but uh, follow me. <laughs> now, when it comes to their menu, Nook keeps it incredibly simple and straightforward, offering only a handful of pastas, pizzas, and appetizers to go along with their wine selection. The philosophy of Nook is to make simple yet delicious food using the highest quality of ingredients. And judging by the packed seats every single night, I think this is definitely a recipe for success. Okay, come with me to the kitchen. This is Lucas, he's gonna be making the pizza for you. So yeah, our, our menu is pretty small. You know, we only have, I think, five or six pizzas on the menu. Mm -hmm. So you, you like the, the thin crust, so that's what people love. It is a certain style of pizza. I mean, this is not like your, your, your traditional takeaway pizza, which has got a six pounds of cheese. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's certainly, there's a, there's a call for both kinds of pizza. I'm, I'm not gonna poo-poo that kind of pizza. There, there, there's a couple days every year where I require uh, getting a pizza delivered to my house. It makes me feel regret in the morning. <laughs> but I think this is relatively good for you for pizza. You know, it's real mozzarella cheese. It's much more low fat. It's, it's only eight ounces of, of bread, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word. Some tomato sauce. I mean, there's really nothing that's all that bad for you in there. So I mean, this is, this is what I like. This is the biggest oven that uh, the wood stove makes. It's 96 inches wide by 60 inches deep. I mean, you can probably fit about eight at a time really comfortably. Yeah. I think what makes us more unique, or did make us unique originally compared to most every other restaurant here, is we make all of our pasta in-house. And that, that was very unusual uh, 11 years ago. Right. It's become much more common now. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think that is what we really did set us set us apart in the beginning. I don't know. What, what, once you eat fresh pasta, it is different. I, I like it a lot better. It's just got a. It's, it, all I can say is different. Well, one is not really better than the other, but it's different. Does this save a lot in cost? Because I know you, you really focus on your ingredients. I, 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 the, the actual like the food cost of it is cheap, but I, you know I have to. I have a 
I pay rent on the space just to make it for all the restaurants. I have a person full time making it. It's probably a wash, but it is easier. I mean, the first year we started, we didn't make it. And you know, it would take like two and a half hours to, to, to par cook all the pasta and get it organized. So this is really easy. We're just set up and go. It takes two minutes to cook the pasta. Yeah, mid eight. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go over here. We're gonna see Alex. So this is uh, my, my least, hands down my least favorite pasta. It's called uh, Rigatoni Boscaiola. Right. It's been on the menu since we opened. And uh, what's so special about it? Nothing, <laughs> nothing. The humans love it. They love it. They cannot get enough. The secret to, to the pasta is the water that you cook it in. It's the water that you cook it in. Yeah, we use that in the sauce. And that starchy water sort of reduces with all your other ingredients and allows the sauce and everything to sort of stick with the pasta and it all comes together. Can you say that that's your secret sauce? Uh, no, that is the secret to pasta. <laughs> Any, anyone that makes pasta, that is the secret to really good pasta. I mean, like I said, we're, it's not rocket science. And then the other nice thing, that the flexibility we have, because we, we cook very simple pastas, is we can use very good ingredients. I mean, we're charging you 20 or, 20 or something dollars for a pasta. Yeah, better be good. And you know, the bulk of it is flour and water mixed together. There's not a lot of cost in the bulk. And so we, we use good things around it to, to, to make it so that you are getting your money's worth. Oh, here we go. And that's the toss. That's the toss. So it, it's got, you got the cream, you got the pasta, you got the water. And you know, if it needs a little reducing, she'll cook it down a little bit till it gets just right. And that, that, that's all there is to it. And then we just, uh, Finish that with a little Parmesan cheese. We put a lot of Parmesan cheese on. I like Parmesan cheese, so we put a lot. Some people think it doesn't need much, but again, we're not uh, we're not Italian here. We're Italian-ish. So that, that's all there is to it. Let's go for a chat. Okay. Now to open a nook of your own, you'd be looking at a large investment of roughly two million dollars. Partly because of the expensive area, partly because of the large space and outdoor patio. And of course, you can't forget about the expensive kitchen equipment and the large brick oven. But by sticking to good, simple food and creating an intimate experience for diners, Nook has proven time and again that this model works very well in the Vancouver area. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for the tour. Thanks for taking us behind the scenes. It's a pleasure. So tell me, when you guys first started, was it like a slamming success right away? It was, and I'll be honest with you, we, we didn't really expect that. I, 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 I didn't really expect it. When we started, it was, it was tiny. It was only a thousand square feet. It had 30 seats, and I didn't think it could ever be that busy. Mm -hmm. But I like eating pasta and pizza, so, I, so we sort of just did it for ourselves, tr really. Yeah. I mean, there, was, there wasn't a lot of that kind of thing here at the time, and I didn't think it would be turn into what it was. And it was, it's been lined up since the day it opened. I, I love that spot. I remember eight years ago. Yeah. My, my my now wife brought me there yeah. and I fell in love with you. Like she's like, that was my favorite pasta place. Well, it's, it's funny you said because I had a colonoscopy and my colonoscopy doctor, uh, as I was getting my colonoscopy, uh, told me that he uh, took his wife there for her first date, for their first date. So there you go. So there you go. There you go. But uh, yeah, so once we did it, we sort of realized that this is, this is sort of the answer if you want to be in the restaurant business. Right. So uh, like... Has it always been so smooth sailing for you? Because like I know a lot of people would want to know like the, the difficult part. Like because like for me when you know I run an ice cream shop. Yeah. And it was difficult. Okay, it was difficult. Yeah, the, the Nook has been smooth sailing since we started, but I've been doing this for for thirty six years. Thirty six years. And my my best gal and I started uh, in nineteen ninety seven on Robson Street with a restaurant called Tapestry, mm -hmm. which was very busy. But we started it you know on a shoestring. And you know we we've been, we've been through all the trials and tribulations. I I was in rehab. Uh, that, that's what that's what, that. what that's what that. Well, I don't know. There's numerous things. Who who knows? I I'll blame it on that. Sure. <laughs> but uh, but it, it was hard. But you know it, it took some time to get going. And we've taken on a couple of partners over the years, which is which is taking a lot of the stress away. Just a, a lot of all the burden being just just on yourself, which which is hard. And when you start, you know, we started in 1997. It was a different time in restaurants. It wasn't like it is now where everybody goes out and eats all the time. It was harder to get customers. I mean, we, we were so broke. You know, we used to have to roll change up and take it to the bank so we could buy booze. We go to the liquor store every day. It was just, you know, you're just chasing your tail. And it takes you, it just takes time to get some momentum. Yeah. But once I clean up my act and settle down and, you know, we once we open this, it, once we had two restaurants, things, oddly enough, got progressively easier. Then we had three, 
and it, 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 it's it's got easier for, for 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 me with every restaurant we've opened, because well, once you don't have one restaurant, you're not the face of that restaurant. You don't have to do everything. You realize you can't do everything. Yes. And that that is that is the rut you get into as a chef or a restaurateur when you have one restaurant. You start off, and you always start off under the gun. It's always yeah. tough. It's tight. You know, the day you open, lots of customers come, but day two is always harder than day one. And then, then it's a grind to get enough customers to come back regularly. And so you, you take on this burden of doing all of the work yourself. And it, it's not sustainable. It's not healthy. You can't do a good job. But once you, once you get a few more restaurants, you realize that you're not Superman. You can't do it all, and you just have to trust people. And once you do that... Your life gets easy in the restaurant business. I think that's the, the, the most difficult part for a lot of restauranteurs is that they're not willing to delegate. Yeah, exactly, but but you got to remember, I, I, I'm 52 the hard way, so it, it, you, you know, I didn't start out that way. Right. So I, I I managed to cobble it together, keep it together for a long time. Yeah. And the so last 15 years have been smooth sailing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so I I got lucky, you know. I I I picked the right woman to help me out, and she got right. me to clean up my act. And I, I got lucky. I mean, I came out better off than I started in this business, and that's unusual. Isn't it really ironic, like the less, not that I'm discrediting you, but less effort that you put in, the more that it becomes easier. You, like you, 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 have to, you have to let your ego go and realize that you're not the only person that can do it. Right. And when you do realize that, everyone you work with is happier, right. because they take on more responsibility, they have, they, they have, you know, they, they have more, more say and more stake, and everyone's happier. They, for me, that, that, that is the secret. I think that's exactly what it is. It's the culture that you're able to build. And we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not cooking ego, ego-driven food either, right? Mm -hmm. we're just, we're, our, our goal is not to make ourselves happy. It's to make our customers happy. We cook food that tastes good, and it, it, it's always going to taste good. I mean, it's pizza and pasta. Mm -hmm. how, can you, how bad can it be? Mm -hmm. And so, so the, the, there's, there's a lot less pressure. You don't have to grind all your employees all the time. Yeah. You know, we, we have a lot more flexibility. The music's loud covers up a lot of the flaws and and it doesn't have to be that hard and with the, the, this business if it's gonna have a long future has to learn that that we can't take all of our our anger out on our employees and make it that difficult we need to make their life easy as well and and that support does I mean when when Nicole and I started 23 years ago I mean we both worked in restaurants forever and we swore we would never run our restaurants the way we'd been treated for the previous 10 years right. of working in restaurants. So we try not to have long days for the cooks. We try not, we don't do split shifts. We, 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 we try to keep a bit of a, a work-life balance as best we can in this business. Yes. And it's yes. not always easy in the kitchen. It's very hard to hire people. Oh, for sure. So sometimes you really do have to rely on, on, your, on your kitchen staff to work more than they should work. Mm -hmm. But we do our best not to, not, not to do that. We, right. we, we, we do our best to keep it Keep the days under nine hours. Right. You have already like talked about all the different secrets to running this business successfully. Yeah, they're, they're not really they're not really secrets. I mean, everybody that's how everybody should treat their employees, but surprisingly, right? Surprisingly, not a lot of people do that. And once again, you know, when you when you start, you, most most restaurants start out undercapitalized, and that is. What do you mean? Tell me. They just don't have enough money to, to, to really get started comfortably. So what we've done, well, once we started expanding, we we didn't expand until we had enough money to expand comfortably. So that we could start with enough staff, you know, like, you, you can't run a restaurant where you have eight people working on the busy nights and two on the slow nights and the rest of the people don't get to work all week. Right. So, so, so we try to keep everybody working year round. Yeah. You know, we, we run the same staff every night, the same amount. Maybe we'll have an extra person on the weekends and everybody gets to work. You know, and, you know we don't do dine out in the winter. Right. We, we, we don't feel a burning desire to be extra busy mm -hmm. in the middle of January. I mean, that's a good, th 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 those months are for the staff to have a bit of a break. Yeah. Because they work like, like dogs in the summertime. It's terrible. It's hot. Yeah. It's busy. So, I mean, it evens out over the year. Right. So we, we, we don't, we don't try to increase our business during the winter time. We try to. So you actually keep treat it. them with heart. You actually I care. try to, I try to. Right, and I like everyone shows. we work with. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's that's amazing. That's my goal. I hope they, I hope they, I hope they feel it. I don't know if they all feel it, but uh, but oh, that sure. that is certainly my goal. I mean, it, it is a, it is a, it is it is definitely the number one goal. I mean, I look at the, the restaurant business as our employees are the number one, our number one importance than the customer. Because if you don't have happy and good employees, you don't have customers, so it doesn't matter, that's, right? That's exactly uh, what. That it doesn't is. mean the customers aren't important as well. Yeah. yeah. But without without without. Uh, employees that feel yeah. like we care about them, you don't have as many customers. And you don't have happy customers. You don't. It, it, you makes, don't. it, it makes it that much harder. I don't want you to make it so simple that everyone's going to spend like two million bucks. You're like, you know what? 
it's gonna work because that's that's so simple. But you, you, but you, the, the other thing a lot of people do, and, and like I said, we've been doing it a long time, is you know your first month's always hard. Mm. Everyone after two weeks of you know things are going bad, they start changing, and then you're just chasing your tail. Yeah. We stick to our guns. You know, in all honesty, when when we step outside of our lane and do something that's not as simple they really don't want it as much as you know spaghetti bolognese that's what the people want gotcha. and they like it we do a good one and we're happy doing it so what's in the works for for new where we make the pasta and kits we have like three or four hundred square foot uh, on first avenue where we just opened up a little pasta like pasta kit room mm -hmm. so we, we sell you a little a little a little kit of pasta where you get uh enough sauce for two enough pasta for two and some some parmesan cheese and we do it for twenty dollars. You come pick it up, and you cook the noodles, heat the sauce up, and, and prepare it at home. It takes about three minutes. It, it's it's idiot proof. It's as good as having it at the restaurant, and people like it. So we're 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 really working on expanding that. I mean, I, I think things are going to get a little dicier in the next yeah. few months before they get better. Yeah. So we're we're going to really expand on that in the fall when the weather gets worse and bad. people are will be less inclined, I think, to come indoors. Yeah. I mean, people are really enjoying, but we have outdoors here. We have a little bit of outdoor space and kits. Mm -hmm. We have outdoor space at all our other restaurants. So so that that that's worked for for for, for the summer, but it's not going to work in the fall. So we have to try a few new things. We're, we're doing a lot of takeout which we've never done before. Mm -hmm. And so we're really going to going to expand on that and I mean our, our plan for Nook was if you had have asked me this seven months ago or six months or two weeks ago, was to, to open more nooks. And that still is, is our plan. Yeah, I, I don't know when. Yeah. Um, we're always looking for new locations. So, I mean, we're lucky during this that we're, we're not a tourist restaurant. We're in neighborhoods. Yeah. We have regular clientele. And tourists always help our business out in the summertime. When, are your, when your regulars go away, yeah. the tourists flood in. It, it, it makes for a really good business. We don't have those tourists now, but we still have enough business. And our, our customers are amazing. I mean, they've been supporting us for 10 years. And, you know, every, every time we move, to open a new restaurant, we have regular customers that used to come and see us starting downtown that start coming to that restaurant. Yeah. So we have really loyal, great customers. And, you know, all of our staff knows all the customers. So, so it, it's been relatively easy for us. And, uh, you know, we, we, once we come out of this, we're, we're going to be ready to open up. I'd, I'd like to open up three or four more. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for your Well, time. thank you for I coming down. I really appreciate this. It's a pleasure. Thank you. This is what we do. <laughs> cheers, awesome. Awesome. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers. So there you go, the behind the scenes in Vancouver's top Italian restaurants, Nook. Mike's philosophy is simple, treat your employees right and serve honest and good food. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Secret Sauce, I'll see you guys in the next episode.